Most people in America are familiar with what is and isn't theirs. In other words, what they have and have not purchased. What they did and did not buy. What they did and did not receive as presents or what we call gracious gifts for some sort of holiday or just because someone wants to say, I love you today. In America, we know what those things are. We remember who gave them to us. We also remember when we received them and by whom we got them delivered to us. I had many precious things in my life and truthfully, almost all one of a kind, incredibly impossible to replace. And what I learned is the abuse in a security place, what's called a locked storage unit, that someone was creating a disgrace for themselves, for their company, and for my family. Because most of my boxes, most of my uh, plastic containers were being pilfered through. I was losing cords, I was losing camera equipment, I was losing clothing, I was losing many things. Occasionally, I would see my clothing on the husband of the female manager in that place. And I was sort of appalled because while they're not always one-of-a-kind shirts, my hats were most definitely so. You see, a man's hat is unique to him. When I went to jail, I had two hats in my two luggage bags. One was a gift from my late father to my son, and my son felt it was more appropriate for me because it was a Tokyo Japanese Dragons baseball team and the other was a Harley Davidson hat that the Lord led me to personally in Ohio to purchase for $14 of that cap a very low price for a memento item of that company my lawfully received by gifts and by purchase that I had had for 20 plus years belt buckles were also stolen from me on top of many metaphysical necklaces that were a part of my faith and an entire leather pouch of both Christian, Catholic, Wiccan, and other pagan type of memory cards to help me remind me of the importance of peace, love, and let's say rock and roll of my faith. The liars of a force decided to steal everything and not return to me not one wallet, not one bank card, not one life insurance policy copy not one birth certificate that was on me and openly it was the sheriff's department responsible for that when i received my clothing back my dragon shirts back they had been ripped by a black officer whose name i have written in my quran but in truth i have other names in my mind of those who participated in unlawful sexual assault sexual harassment and harangment in that experience you see, I was placed in a different space, and I shouldn't have been. I should have been left in the medical lab because I do have a condition that has to be monitored once a month. And openly, that was apparently too difficult for an extended or an outsourced company of nurses to perform, and officers illegally and immoral wanted to infiltrate and harm. The officer at my final visit to get the final opportunity you see god had already told me in advance that they wouldn't deliver it and i knew that i received a placebo the times before but what i also know is that some policemen interfered with my lawful rights or a medical pharmaceutical person did in the facility in which i was receiving from a major company called walgreens i believe it was to a target store my prescription and it was probably done by the Muslim pharmacist who was there at the door. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. And in truth, my prescription got booted from a different company or a different location because of infiltration of sheriff who wanted to interfere with my lawful rights to receive a prescription I need for the rest of my life. You see, the funniness of how people are in their malfeasance and their malpractice is thinking that they are specialists for people like me. And the illegalness and immoralness of state police of any community or local city police is a thinking that they have the right to sexually traffic a human being like me or improperly steal medical rights from me by drugging a person 
and taking them to a facility to investigate thoroughly something that they are curious about and not ever telling that person what records they've created without lawful consent or lawful right. What they fail to recognize is that God is raging across America with COVID for the immoralness, illegalness, and the arrogance of men. And the arrogance of men was proposed to them long ago in a jail cell that I guarantee was full of video and commandeering. And the comment that I made was, you know, this is ridiculous. You've got people that I don't even know watching me pee every fucking day without my lawful consent. How dare you do that? How dare you not allow me one moment of peace and quiet to myself? And how dare you leave me for hours at ends, forgetting to feed me sometimes on purpose? And that's on you in front of heaven spent. But in life, we have moments of time to tell the story, to tell the truth for God's glory that you failed yourself and you availed yourself of allowing yourself to abuse someone like me. And after that, isn't it interesting that God released COVID? Now, I am not arrogant enough to say that he did that only solely for me, but I will ask every single pastor across America, how much do you submit to the God in heaven like me? Do you actually wait to go to the toilet because God says not yet? Your body needs a healthier opportunity. Or do you actually submit what you're going to buy in the store to the angels around you that are promised in the book of John and other aspects and other verses of our Lord's Bible? Or do you actually arrogant, buy, arrogantly buy food without ever considering what God thinks is right for you or your mood or your cellular health? In life and in our own opportunities, we know what is and isn't lawfully our rights. And yet we have biological siblings and we have strangers in communities that think they have the right to your body in its form of sexual human trafficking that is so immoral that it destroys and obliterates not only our constitution for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, but it destroys our amendments that says that we have the right to freedom of assembly. Because an officer can steal things from your pockets when you're sleeping and go across the street and interfere with your business relationships, providing them immoral and illegally clad and commandeered information that's never their right to ever be had. You see, our privacy rights are, remain ours. Our medical rights do not belong to any family member. And our popularity doesn't matter in a community when we're not planning to stay there. In life, we have moments of, of life to say that some officers know where their rights begin and end, while other officers abuse their rights. And isn't it interesting that when I did a haircut for myself, to clean up my head for my religious faith of being a priest of a pagan order that comes right out of the historic world of our Lord's order, that someone actually came up to me with a British accent asking me where the local hair cutter was, but openly the bag that I had held that hair follicles in to properly dispose of underneath the rules of hair cutting was stolen from me while I slept. And isn't it interesting that my bags have constantly been pawed through by some person out of curiosity, perhaps, when in truth they knew immediately that they were creating a felony for themselves. You see, in life, we have to recognize where our rights begin and end. And when you see a person who's impoverished, you must ask yourself, how many times have I seen that individual? How long have they been there? What are they doing to try to change their life? Or are they lying to other people about how they're trying to get a job with famous name corporations? And are they really doing that? Or are they spending the morning sleeping and then coming out to pedal, which there's nothing wrong with? Because some people, as you know, do make a good living that way. We know in our Indianapolis community that some people make 30 plus grand living that way. But we also know that there's a good number of people that have given up because they've given in to their vices and their devices of whether it's the trafficking of drugs or the trafficking of sex or the trafficking of information because they've stolen things from you and me by learning illegally and immorally how to hack your cell phone all while you're giving them your pocket change. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth, and most men who are mature men want to work in a company or build their own business on their own accord, 
on their own gifts from the Lord, on their own talents that they've treated or trained into their life, and on their own seasoning of experience in a business venture that provided for their family without any help of any kind until, of course, they might have lost a life partner, a significant other, a person of impact on their livelihood or their life. You see, the liars of America think they have the right to treat a sibling as a baby and interfere with their relationships and lie about the rights to enter a home without lawful consent and steal paperwork and ruin historic documents and destroy computers and obliterate writing things that are being purchased by major publishers. And how dare you think you have the right to steal intellectual property from anyone at all because the Lord God above gifted it to them and not to you. But the immoralness of America can be found in every industry. Every liar who lies to himself about stealing things in the sadly, we only see a handful of them making trial and only a handful of them in the news because many are caught by their companies, but instead of sending them to jail, they release them into another public sector, another place, and they learn virtually nothing at all. And they continue on doing probably worse and worse things. I can remember hearing a news story of a young man who was a temporary employee of a corporation where I worked long ago, and he had gotten himself so hyped up that he ended up killing someone over a purchase of a motorcycle. And I felt how sad for him because at the time I knew him, he was nothing like that. And he was trying to get himself out of the impoverished mindset of being a temporary employee because a lot of temps don't really want the relationship, they don't want the commitment, they like the variety of changing jobs all the time. And that we can fault their parents for, for never instilling in them the importance of relationships. You see, it's relationships that make our life. But it's relationships with the husband, with the spouse, with the wife, with the live-in, with a long-term partner that gives us the health of our life, the wealth of our business sometimes, or the improperness of an employment network. In life, we have all kinds of relationships, but the most significant one to us is our significant other. And if our significant other has is an open failure that we're trying to improve or raise up as if they're a child of ours to mentor and train, we've already failed ourselves because we didn't pick someone who was equally yoked to our heart, our mind, or our souls today. You see, the failure of most churches is not bringing enough teenagers to help them in the concept of it takes a village to produce a healthy, wealthy, and wise performing individual in our society so that the future of America doesn't die with the stupidity of individuals and their desire for notoriety, which we all know is actually more of a negative term than a positive publicity for their life, their livelihood, their relationships. The beauty of Japanese society is that it teaches children, not necessarily in the best of ways because of bullying that is corporately allowed to try to force people into certain roles and rules and regulations of their society, which is socialist by nature, I believe, and a little bit of a democracy in some ways. But the truth is that the beauty of that society is the reminder to every child that they are representative not of themselves but they are always representative of a larger team a larger group a larger organization a larger corporation and so when they introduce themselves they begin in adult life with my corporation my department my title my family name and then their personal name you see, there's a beauty that can be learned from the rest of the world and many of the cultures and societies around the world. America needs to be a better prolificator of taking those things in. The president and the vice president have traveled through the world recently for appropriate reasons to reestablish relationships that were strained by the previous president who did not do that well, according to the notes I've been hunting for. Because one of my curiosities was, why does everybody love this guy? Did he really perform to the best of his ability on behalf of all Americans? Raising up individuals to help people 
improve our society and to love kindness and peace or was he a perpetrator of crime abuser of laws and a liar and a, a braggart of all sorts and all forms you see people with fame and wealth can become incredibly well known but that doesn't mean we want them in our home now myself I've always quipped that I would love to have President Trump over for dinner sometime just to interview him about his life his adventures his catastrophes his challenges his problems his triumphs but that's because I love the human story and I feel that everyone has a life of journey for God's glory but the truth is just because he's now become a born-again type of person in theory after having four wives and plenty of whores that he's paid for through lawsuits and other ways for his aberrant sexual be needs and behavior as a rich man in society today and it should be very well understood that when the Clinton thing went down with God bless her heart Monica Lewinsky who alleges through her TED talk she fell in love with her boss which you think and go okay I'll accept that because you need that and it probably was true because we never know what happens behind closed doors and how people interact with each other and whether or not people are properly married or properly betrothed and, or uh, appropriately betrothed and equally yoked with their spouses and whether or not their spouses really love them or whether they just got on and said all aboard we're going this direction and I'm going to get there too but the bottom line is that the words I love you mean something to people and when their heart felt sent and when their heart felt spent and when their heart felt we know it because that individual is behind us 100% in the pursuit of the relationships, not at all, the life that God has planned for us, which is never in the hands of any real parent exactly after a particular age. About the time a kid reads his 14 and 15, they're sort of on their life path. And a parent's job is then to keep guiding them within the lines of society, guiding them in within the rules of propriety, and guiding them within the constructs of society that says, go off and get the best job you can possibly obtain. Make your life in every way. Choose education, choose certification, choose quick, fast training to get yourself into life as an adult so you'll be a success and you'll find the right type of life partner, you'll find the right type of lover, you'll find the right type of friend, you'll find the right type of ends for your life.